Reading temperature with a click PLC is easy. In fact, this is all the code you need right here. Don't see any? Me neither. There isn't any. You don't have to write a single line of code to get the temperature with a click PLC. Now you'll have to write code to use the temperature of course, but once everything's set up, the input temperature values just appear. In this example, we have a click PLC connected to two thermocouples, two RTDs, and three different types of temperature transmitters, a sensor head mounted transmitter, an integral transmitter, and a fixed DIN rail mounted transmitter. Here's what it looks like on a test rack. Here's the click PLC, here's the two thermocouples, here's the two RTDs, and here's the three different types of temperature transmitters. They're wired exactly like the block diagram shows. The cable shield is grounded only at the sensor end, not at the PLC end. In general, you'll always want to ground the shield at the signal source end and definitely at one end only. Otherwise, you'll end up with another current path which could create a ground loop and actually make things worse than having no shield at all. And the thermocouples use the special thermocouple DIN rail terminal blocks. These ensure continuity of the special thermocouple wire by clamping the wires together instead of contacting them through a terminal block which would create unwanted thermocouple junctions. Well, that's it for the hardware. Let's look at the software. As we mentioned earlier, you don't have to write any code to get the temperature values. You just configure the click to do it for you. The cool thing about the Click PLC is when you connect to the Click, the software automatically identifies all the modules you have plugged in. We can see that under System Configuration. The software reminds us to select the power supply we're using and that the modules have not been set up yet. We know that so we hit OK. We're using the AC supply so we select that. Now we can see how we're doing power budget wise. Let's see, we're only using 340 milliamps of the 1300 available, so we're in good shape. The software found an 8 input digital module, an 8 output digital module, a 4 input analog 4 to 20 milliamp card, a thermocouple module, and an RTD module. Perfect. To set up the analog module, we just hit configure. Our temperature transmitters are connected to these first three channels and are providing a 4 to 20 milliamp loop, so we'll need to put 4s here. The first transmitter is a programmable sensor head transmitter that's been configured to give us 0 to 100 degrees F and we'll put that in memory location DF30. This checkbox up here says just fill in the rest of the registers for us. I really like that. The second temperature transmitter is an integral temperature transmitter and it's fixed at 0 to 100 degrees C which is 32 to 212 degrees F. And the third transmitter is a DIN rail thermocouple type J module with a fixed output of 0 to 100 degrees F. And that takes care of our temperature transmitters. Let's configure the thermocouple module. We're only using two of the channels and we want the result to be in degrees F. They both happen to be type J thermocouples using this temperature range and we'll put them at memory location DF40 and click this guy again to fill in the rest. This module supports a wide array of thermocouples and one key feature is you can specify a different type of thermocouple for each channel. Some PLCs mandate that you have to use the same thermocouple type on all channels of the module. And when choosing a standard probe type, the scaling is set up for you. You don't have to fool with that. The only time you need to set up scaling is if you're using a custom voltage range. Now this thermocouple module provides indications at these input values to determine if the sensor is open or under or over voltage. And you can detect when the module is initializing or not functioning. Those are awesome features to take advantage of in your ladder code. Ok, finally, let's configure the RTD module. Here's a little trick. Instead of clicking configure, you can also just double click on the module. We're using two of the RTD channels and we want the results to be in degrees F. Both RTDs are PT100s over this temperature range. This module supports all these kinds of RTDs and just like the thermocouple module, you can specify a different RTD type for each channel. We'll use this option again and let's start the RTDs at memory location DF50. Again, on this module, you can read these input values to determine if the sensor is open or under over voltage. And you can detect whether the module is initializing or not functioning. Don't ignore those. They can be real handy when you're trying to debug things. Well, that's it. We just configured seven temperature measuring subsystems in about two minutes. Let's transfer the program to the Click PLC and see what happens. Here's a data view showing us all of those temperature values. The values would normally be pretty close in temperature, but I've been messing with them so they're still settling down. Here's another key feature of the Click PLC. The values shown are the actual temperature values. Some PLCs give you a number with an implied decimal point, 
So instead of 77.2 degrees, you get 772 degrees and you have to remember that there's an implied decimal. The click gives you the actual decimal temperature value. If I put a cup of cold water on one of the probes and hot one another, then the values change accordingly. I set up a Seymour HMI to monitor the values too. If we swap the probes, then we see the results graphically. Perfect. If I disconnect one of the wires, the indicator that's monitoring that contact provided by the temperature module lights up. So I instantly know there's an issue with the wiring of the sensor. I love that feature. And again, we haven't written one line of ladder code to get these temperature values. If you have any questions or need any help, please don't hesitate to contact Automation Direct's free award winning tech support during regular business hours. They'll be happy to help. And don't forget the forums. There's lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any support questions on the forums. Automation Direct's support staff doesn't monitor the forums on a regular basis.